Hey guys and welcome to a new video. Today we will take a look at the overclocking of the GTX 1080 Ti Founders Edition. I have the card mounted here on my test setup. The test setup is the ASUS Rampage 5 Edition 10 with a 6950X overclock to 4 GHz and 32GB of G-Skill memory. So today we will not do the power target mod, we will only do overclocking on air without any modifications. So for that you need the MSI Afterburner, you can also use any other tool which is similar to this, for example ASUS GPU Tweak or EVGA Precision X. Those tools all work the same, so pick whatever tool you want, personally I prefer the Afterburner. So if you open the Afterburner in the middle you have the control area and on the left you can see the current status of your GPU, you can see for example that currently my GPU is running at 600 MHz on the GPU and 400 MHz on the memory, on the right side you can see the GPU voltage and also the GPU temperature which is currently 32 degrees Celsius. Now I recommend that you also use GPU C at the same time and you can click on the small question mark and then start the render test and the render test will push the card into 3D mode so now you can see that the card is running at almost 1900 MHz on the core and 5500 MHz on the memory. So this, really, this is really a helpful way to see the real clock of your card because the card, um, the, the real clock of your card really depends on the boost clock which, which is dependent on your individual GPU but also maybe the um, cooling solution so if you run a water block your boost will be a lot higher. Also this helps uh, to address the right core clock so for example if we now increase the core clock you can see this is the real core clock of around 2 GHz now. But for now what we want to do is test uh, the possibilities, what we can do to increase the performance of this card without any modifications. To test this I'm going to use the new Unigine uh, Superposition Benchmark. Um, previously I often used FutureMic 3 d Mic, but I found this new benchmark and I actually really like this one. It's a very good benchmark, the performance is really really close to gaming performance. It's actually, it's pretty much like a game. You, you also have a game sub, not subtest, but you have a game option where you can actually play a game. So this is more like a game than just a benchmark, so the performance numbers you get from this benchmark are really reflecting game performance. That's what I really like about this benchmark. So on top you can select performance and then for example you can do 4K optimized, what I did uh, testing this card. Um, also you have this stress test option, if you have the advanced version of this benchmark like I do, you can for example set the duration to 30 minutes, set texture quality to high, that's what I also did to testing this and then if you overclock your card just keep this uh, stress test running for 30 minutes and then it should be perfectly fine for any game because I also tested uh, it with um, Overwatch and also with Ghost Recon Wildlands and the clock I had stable in the super position benchmark stress test was also stable in those two games so I'm pretty sure that this stress, te stress test works very well. So running the 4K preset and not adjusting anything on the card, I got 8800 um, points in this benchmark with a minimum FPS of around 52 and average FPS of about 50, uh, 65. So the first thing we can do to optimize the performance of this card is increase the power limit. You can simply push the power limit to 120% and just apply this setting. This is the easiest way of increasing the performance of the card because the, um, the card can consume more power and therefore increase the clock itself. This helped me to push the score from 8800 to almost 9100 and increase minimum and average FPS by 1 FPS which is already good considering that we actually didn't do anything. So the next step what we can do is adjust the fan curve because um, what I figured out is most Pascal GPUs are more temperature limited than also uh, voltage limited. So you can adjust the fan curve in MSI Afterburner by clicking on this sign and then go to fan, enable user defined software automatic fan control on top and then just adjust the fan curve. You can simply drag those small things to the left and that's how you lower the fan power, the fan target. So you can see, for example, if I would use this, the card would go to 100% fan speed at 62 degrees Celsius. Obviously, the card will be very loud then, but that's one way of increasing the performance. You can probably not hear it in the video, but I can already hear that the fan is spinning faster. You can also see the fan speed is now at 42% already. Usually it's around 30% when you're only in Windows. So using the adjusted fan curve and also running the power limit at the max, I managed 
um, to get 9200 points in the superposition benchmark and increase minimum and average FPS again by around 1 FPS. So we are now in, uh, at around 5%, 6, 6 or 5% performance boost just by adjusting the power limit to 120% and also adjusting the fan curve manually. So the next and last step would be to overclock GPU and memory manually. I tested several cards, so from my point of view, you can adjust the core clock by plus 150 and the memory clock by plus 550 on every single card. Just apply the setting and it should work on all cards. You can simply test this by running GPU-C and quickly run the render test. If this would be unstable, it would immediately crash and reset your driver and then you can go back into MSI Afterburner and reset your settings. Don't be scared, nothing will happen if you, uh, if you run too, uh, too high clocks. It will just reset the driver, reset your settings and then you can uh, set them again. So on my card I managed to do plus 170 MHz offset on the GPU core clock and plus 600 MHz offset on the memory clock and therefore I could increase the superposition benchmark score from 8800 to 9800 which is around 12% performance boost considering that that just takes a few minutes in the MSI afterburner that's a very solid performance increase. What I also noticed is that for sure at this point you're completely limited by the power targets. So I measured the power consumption of this complete setup during the benchmark run. If you run the card on stock, the, the total power consumption of this system is around 400 watt. And if you increase the power target by 120%, also increase uh, GPU clock and memory clock, you will end up uh, with a maximum power consumption of the whole rig of around 445 watt. So that's an increase of almost 50 watt. But um, I also noticed if I incre increase the core clock further, the power consumption will not increase anymore. So you just completely limit it by the power target, which means that in the next video, if we apply the power target mod to this card, we should be able to push the card even further and then prob probably uh, break 10,000 points barrier in the super precision benchmark. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked this video. The new video with the GTX 1080 Ti and power target modding will come soon. I wish you a very nice day and see you soon.